Hey guys, this is Shane here with Echo Soundworks, and you're watching episode one of Playlisted Spotify Sounds. So this is a series where we're gonna recreate synth sounds from songs that have been placed in some of the biggest playlists on Spotify. So we're gonna use popular synths like Serum, Anna 2, Vital, and any other ones you want me to consider using. So if you have any suggestions, drop those in the comments below. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at four different songs spread across a few different genres, and they're all placed in different playlists. I don't wanna keep this just one genre. I think that'd get a little bit boring over time. I want it to be more open-ended. Sometimes it'll be a pop song, Sometimes it will be a synthwave track or an EDM track or even trap and hip hop. So that being said, let's cut the intro short, dive into our DAW and get going. So I should have mentioned this in the intro. If you guys want to download any of the presets that we're going to be looking at and recreating in this video, the link will be down in the description. All right. So the first sound we're going to be recreating in this video is a really cool sound. It's from the Kid Lar Laroi's track with Justin Bieber. It's called Stay. This is produced by Charlie Puth and it's just got a really cool sound to it. So you see these two purple tracks under Serum on my screen here. Uh, it's basically the exact same preset. I'm just using one as the bass and then one as the main sound. It's the lead sound. And the only difference here is that the, uh, the bass note, it's not really a bass, it's just a bass note. It doesn't have the reverb and delay on it. So let's take a listen. So I'm pretty proud of how this one turned out. I think it's really close to the original. Now, I know that Charlie Booth has a, uh, <laughs> he really loves his vintage, his vintage analog synth. So I was just assuming he used some vintage analog waveforms. So I, that was my starting point. I loaded up some analog sounding saw waves in Serum. Now, the thing that was hard to get right about this sound was actually there's this slight it sounds almost like a slight like vocal or sync sound happening very lightly with the sound. And you don't get that with just a straight basic saw wave. So there's something more going on under the hood. Now let's just dial back some of this preset and we will start to go back uh, basically piece by piece. So the main saw sound that I'm using is this this waveform here and it's kind of like a saw on the first half with a little bit of a sign on the second half. I gave it five voices of unison. We'll turn that down. So here's what it sounds like just soloed. Gave it some voices of unison and then I kept the random and the blend up pretty high. I wanted it to sound like a detune sound. And then I gave it a little bit of a warp mode, Ben Plus. And that's going to pinch the waveform when you modulate it with something like an envelope, which is what I did. And that's going to reduce some of the high frequencies or, and some of the low frequencies, depending on how you have it set. Which with a saw wave can make it a little less buzzy and a little less, a little less bright. So then I layered that with another oscillator, oscillator B. And this is the sound that's getting that kind of sync vocal element that I hear. It's not, not just a straight saw wave. If it was just a straight filtered out saw wave, it's not as interesting of a sound. So I'm using this thing called sync window. If I turn this off, here's what the wave looks like. It actually sounds really similar to oscillator A, right? So I didn't want to do that because I'd just be stacking the exact same sound on top of itself, which you usually don't want to do. So I use sync, I used a sync window for this and you can see that it's carving up my waveform and it's adding these different they're called duty cycles and uh, I don't know why it's called that pretty weird but it's going to add a little bit of high frequency kind of like a like a twinkle to the sound and then gave it three voices of unison now those two sounds together sound like this So when I listened to the sound, I realized that a good portion of the high frequency content was filtered out. Now, this was a hard part of the sound to get right. So one of the things that was difficult was setting the filter. It doesn't sound like an EDM style pluck. There's more of the open filter. It's more of a static positioning. So I was modulating it with an envelope, but you got to be careful not to over modulate with the filter because it will just start to sound like a pluck. And the sound in the original song, it it does not sound like a pluck. It just sounds like a filtered out uh, kind of a saw wave that has less, less buzz and brightness to it. All right, 
and then I just used a little bit of processing in Serum, a little bit of EQ to carve out some of the high frequencies, almost as like a pseudo bandpass filter. It's like a weird bandpass filter shape, I guess. And then a little bit of filter at the end just to tighten up some things even more with the free high frequency content. And then for, pros, pro, pro, for post processing, we have echo adding some delay because there's a lot of delay, a little bit of reverb. And if you listen to the song with headphones, the original song, you'll notice that there's this fairly present noise happening. And that's probably because of, again, the analog gear. So I'm using RC20 retro color just to add the noise. No wobble, no lo-fi, no tape flutter, just to add the noise. And that gives us our final sound. All right, so now we're going to look at a sound from Fisher's new track, Just Feels Tight. And we're going to be looking at the lead saw sound that comes in partway through the drop. So this saw sound is deceptively simple. It's one of those sounds where you, you take a first listen, and you're like, oh, that's going to be so easy to remake. And then it's not. It's kind of got these subtle nuances that make it interesting. Because if it was just as simple as you think it was the first time you heard it, it would be really boring. So let's take a listen to it. So here's the remake. All right, so it's that saw sound that you hear. Now, to highlight what I mean by it's deceptively simple, here's just a straight up default saw sound in Serum with a little bit of low pass filter and it doesn't sound like that. I'm not gonna recreate each thing from scratch. We're gonna just kind of go backwards in the preset. I think that's a better way to learn how to make presets as opposed to showing you uh, basically step by step. It's better that you can see everything at once. And I'm going to be talking about why I did the things I did as opposed to just what I did. All right. So the first thing, let's turn everything off except one oscillator. So the first thing I did was I loaded up a analog sounding saw wave. Fisher loves using synths that sound more analog. Like he probably used like Diva, maybe Monarch or some analog sounding synth in this track if he even produced it. And uh, so I went with a saw. It's one of our saws. You can download this in our free pack modular. It's called ESW Forward Saw. Now it's just a little bit more rounded, which you can see. So Oscillator B has, has just the default digital saw waveform. And you can see that it's more digital looking. It's less rounded, it's more straight, it's more perfect. So that's what I did in the first oscillator. So, that just sounds like this. Let me turn off the, the warp mode. So it's just a little bit less bright and buzzy, and that's important for later because we're gonna try to add some buzziness to it using some distortion, and having a less bright and buzzy saw makes that process a little bit more easy to uh, dial in the right sound. So then I added some voices of unison. Now it's important to note that I'm not trying to make like a super saw sound. So I'm gonna keep the detune down quite low and the blend up quite, quite low as well because I don't want too many of the wide voices being kind of overtaking the center voice. Now listen to this, this sounds more like a super saw sound. If I take this random knob down, which is gonna tell Serum where to trigger the phase from, and I make it less random, meaning the phase is starting more in a specific point each time, we get a little bit of that width from the detuned voices, but we still maintain the buzziness of the saw. And then I loaded up a little bit of pulse with modulation just to make the saw sound a little bit more nasally. All right, and then I layered that with the default saw in oscillator B and another saw from the sub oscillator. Now the pulse width modulation is being modulated by this envelope here. It's just adding a little bit of movement. It doesn't have to be this exact envelope shape. It's just, you know, it worked. I thought it worked quite well. So next up, I added some noise. All right, so next up, I added a little bit of noise and then turned on a low pass filter. Now I'm using a low pass six. The six stands for how many decibels per octave gets attenuated or boosted depending on the filter. So we're using a low pass filter so that is attenuated, meaning reduced. So I have the cutoff set to about halfway and then I'm modulating it with an envelope. So this is one of those things that makes the sound not as boring. When I said you, if you oftentimes hear what you think is kind of a simple sound, there's usually these things going on under the hood. There's usually a little bit of modulation happening at the filter level, maybe the velocity or some effects just to make the sound a little bit more interesting. So I'm used envelope two on the cutoff and the fat. And then the LFO, the first LFO I'm using as another envelope just 
to make a custom shape that'd be harder to make in the actual envelopes to modulate the resonance. And then I used some distortion and coarse in Serum, and that's basically it from the effects in Serum. Now, the, the distortion type I'm using is called Linear Fold. And it adds a lot of buzz to it, and that's what I referenced a few minutes ago. If I had too buzzy of a sound coming into this, it would be really unruly. I am using a little bit of a pre-filter here to carve off some of the lows and a little bit of the highs. And then I layered in a coarse, and I believe I did have a EQ just slightly cutting out some of those real high frequencies from about 15,000, 16,000 hertz up. And then there's a little bit of EQ post-processing happening via FabFilter 3. You put that all together. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Ed Sheeran's track, Bad Habits. And I, I couldn't believe when I heard this the first time that this was Ed Sheeran. Um, so I actually do have, I actually did recreate more of this track. You can see I have some drums here, the bass and his vocals up here. So I have, I've tuned the, everything down to semitones and I added a format shift to his voice with the hopes that I won't get a copyright claim on this. But here's what it sounds like all together. And there are two basses uh, working in tandem to get the bass sound. All right, so the interesting thing about this sound is that uh, it's kind of like a slap house Brazilian bass bass sound. And we actually just released a massive sound set in Sam Pack called Roses. A lot of you already know about it. You already love it. I've gotten tons of great messages about it. So thank you for the support there. But yeah, it's actually kind of interesting. I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> Ed Sheeran's doing like a slap bass slap house style drop. Now, the interesting thing about it, though, is the rhythm. So here's our kick. And in the beginning of his course, or you know, your drop, if you're more EDM oriented, the uh, kick and bass is the only thing that you hear with his voice. And it's got this kind of weird old school pattern where it's like boots and hats. You have the kick and then you have the bass and they're completely separated. Like it's not happening via side chain compression or ducking or LFO tool. They're just completely just not you know they're not together and i thought that was interesting it gives it this more of this uh this bounce and so if i start to peel these two layers here and cut them you can see that there's just straight up space between the kick and the bass so it's like the bass is almost acting as an open hi-hat which i thought was kind of a cool pop twist on the slap house style so the first bass here this is the main bass and this has more of the high frequency content the mids and the low mids and you'll notice that uh, a lot of the slap house bases, if you go through any presets from any packs, a lot of them use spectral waveforms and FM waveforms. It, it's what gives it the sound. You don't have to do that, but that's part of where that sound comes from. So let's dial back what's going on in this sound. So I'm gonna turn off the filter and we'll, we'll keep the other sounds in for now. And let's turn off the second oscillator and let's turn off some of the effects. Really, really changes the sound. So as opposed to the other couple sounds we've looked at already, this one requires a fair bit of processing. So I'm using what's called a squelchy waveform. This is a waveform or wavetable that comes with Serum. And it's got a lot of digital content to it. So no voices of unison. The only thing I'm doing is I'm literally just turning the random knob all the way down. Now I am layering that with the second oscillator and it's using one of our custom wavetables and you can download this for free. This is from our pack, the core wavetables. It's called FM Acetate. And it is just a really digital sounding waveform. And I'm adding five voices of unison to this and keeping the random all the way up. So oscillator A is acting as kind of our stable oscillator. There's no voices of unison, so it's centered. And the random, the random phase is turned all the way down. So it's gonna trigger the same every time you hear it. Whereas oscillator B is kind of like the flavor oscillator for the bass. And then I'm adding, which is really common for slap bass sounds, part of the reason why it's called, or slap house is called slap, is there's usually a pretty present transient of a kick in the initial attack sound. And that's layered together. Now all that's being ran into a notch filter to remove some specific frequencies, mainly these high mids. 
So it still doesn't sound like a slap house base. We're going to get there. Now let's go down to the envelope. So you could use any shape. It just kind of depends on what you pl how you played it. So I played this in on my keys. I didn't pencil it in. So I just made the envelope shape fit what I played in terms of release, attack, and the sustain. So not nothing too crazy there. So now the effects is where most of the sound is actually happening. We have a compressor, a distortion, EQ, filter, and we have some reverb at the end. So if we go through these one by one, the compression is set to multiband mode, so it's even making the sound brighter than it already is. Then we're adding some distortion, some diode too. <laughs> Could you imagine hearing Ed Sheeran's voice with this aggressive of a bass? So you see that I'm modulating some of the uh, distortion here with an envelope just to make it less static and make it move a little bit. Then the EQ. Now the EQ is where the sound will start to actually take shape and turn into a slap house style bass. I'm taking out some of the lows and I'm doing this kind of pseudo bandpass filter. We looked at this with Justin Bieber's track and the Kid Leroy's track, Stay. And then last, the filter. So I'm using a second low pass filter. And I'm modulating that with an envelope. So you might be thinking, uh, it's kind of crazy that you're adding all this high frequency content. You're using really digital waveforms and then you're just cutting it all out. Well, that's exactly what makes a slap house bass a slap house bass. You do this crazy amount of processing, you have this overly digital, overly bright wave when you turn everything off and then you generally filter all that out. All right, so that sound is layered with one other sound, more of a kind of a classic like deep house type stab and it has more of a square element to it. And this is actually straight from our pack Roses. It sounds like this. And this is where more of the uh, of the low frequency content's coming and I carved out some of the mids and some of the highs so these two basses sit together. Now it wasn't hard to get them to sit in context with the track because they literally never touch when the kick hits. And then you just layer those together and you get the final result. All right, so lastly, we're going to look at a bass from a song that I absolutely love, Lizzo's Rumors. So this tr this track is just, I love the production. I love how it starts out with this kind of early 2000s bass vibe with some simple drums, and then it progresses into a full-on just like brassy pop track. So we're going to be looking at the bass sound in the first section of the track. And I actually put together some basic drums, and this is what it sounds like. So this was by far the hardest sound of these four to remake. Um, the it, It's one of those sounds where unless you stumble across the exact thing that the producer used or that they, they did, it's not going to sound close to one to one. But I think it's fairly close. And the thing to take away from this, I think, for you guys and your production and your music isn't, you know, oh, cool, I can use a bass that sounds 75, 80 percent similar to Lizzo's track rumors no it's take away from from what we're looking at in this video is the trends in sound design right so let's go through what's going on with the sound let's go to the effects you can see there are many let's turn off the effects so we can start to peel those away turn off everything except oscillator a so here's how kind of the sound starts out a crazy right weird sound so I, voices of unison i set to three the bass sound is quite wide. It's actually an incredibly wide bass, and that's what kind of makes it interesting. It's uh, this very digital sounding bass. So I'm using a spectral wavetable from our pack, uh, the uh, core wavetables, which again, that's free. Link will be down in the description. So it's a very digital sounding waveform, and I'm layering that with a basic shape saw waveform. So this is what's helped giving me that kind of like, there's this talking quality to her, to the bass in that song. And that's making that kind of happen is layering that to that digital waveform with more of a saw wave. Now I'm using a uh, kind of a pinched square wave here. In the sub oscillator and that's giving the bass a lot of its meat. And all that's being ran into the filter. And there's where you start to get the sound. It starts to take shape, right? Now, the effects play a very important role in this sound. Now, one thing that's important with this sound is that you'll notice when they play higher notes from the first note to the fourth note in the bass line or third note, 
the filter seems to open up more. So I actually stuck the key tracking on. So then the filter reacts to the notes that you play. Now the envelope shape, I went with a kind of a weird, I call it the shark fin shape. Uh, I wanted a little bit longer of a sustain, but not really sustain because it's it, the notes cut off quite quickly. Right, so it's starting to take shape. Now let's go over to the effects. So hyper and dimension, this is gonna add even more width to the sound. Like this bass is super wide, so that's why I did that. And I'm just setting the taste. The hyper adds voices of unison to the whole sound, kind of like pseudo voices of unison, not at an oscillator level. And then the dimension expander can make this kind of just short reverb to help widen things up. Next up is a little bit of distortion, but not really distortion. I'm just using a soft clipper. And I'm modulating that with an envelope just to make the sound a little bit more present, a little bit more beefy. And again, that I'm not trying to make it like super plucky. Just add a little bit more presence. Now, next up, we have the course. So course is going to, again, add more width to the sound. And I have the mix at about 40, 30% and just did blended all that to taste. Now, next is a phaser. So this just adds one little extra kind of wrinkle to the whole talking element of this bass. So I didn't have it set too high, maybe 35, 36%. And then we have compressor, and this is not set to multiband. This is actually just compressing, which I know is weird for a serum preset. And then last we have the EQ. Now the EQ is just carving out some of the lows. And then you, uh, I think I had need to set the filter up a little bit higher. And I think I turned down the random a little bit and I adjusted the blend here. So let's listen to it in context one more time. And there you have it. All right, so that's gonna sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.